Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I'm John Bishop with John Bishop Fine Art, and you're listening to Art Chat, the podcast. Welcome back. Listen, I've been really, really busy this week, and I think that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, lots of stuff with the business. Obviously, we still got all this end of the year stuff and finishing out uh, 2021, doing paperwork, getting tax kinds of things uh, organized and, uh, and, and getting things stored and filed and filed away. And it's just a whole lot uh, that has to go out, the 1099s and, and then the getting ready for the taxes. Uh, we're finishing up with mom's estate this year. So uh, there's a lot more that has to go on with taxes. Actually, there's probably not, but we just don't know yet. So it's just, a, it's been a very, very stressful uh, two or three weeks. It's also been a really, really lucrative two or three weeks. We've done really well at the beginning of the year. And I, as, as I recall, you know, an art business, like many businesses, has peaks and valleys. And as I recall, I always thought January was a bit of a valley and that things were kind of dead until spring. <laughs> uh, so I'm absolutely delighted and a little nervous. Uh, whenever you things are going really, really well, you wonder when that, that shoe is going to drop. So uh, are we ready for the next lean time, for that next valley when it comes? So I'm trying not to be pessimistic, trying to be optimistic. But things have been going really, really well. And we've been having a lot of fun doing it. Um, lots of creative juices flowing. There are times when I haven't been able to devote enough to the actual creation of art because I've been doing so much of the business stuff. But, you know, again, peaks and valleys, that, uh, that happens. Uh, so we've had our open days. And uh, so we're open every second Saturday. All the studios at Sawyer Yards are open. Every third Saturday, just the studios in Silver Street, uh, my building, are open. And uh, just, I'm just not getting any foot traffic. I mean, if I'm seeing five, six people a day, uh, my first weekend at Silver Street, I think there were 800 people. Uh, it scared me. I thought I was going to have to hire staff uh, just to manage the crowds. Uh, and of course, no sales. I haven't had sales in ages uh, through that kind of walk-in traffic. And so we're, we're realizing that that part of the business just isn't working. The studios are great, but they are not working as kind of shops where people just stumble in. Now, granted, it can happen, and it's, and it's happened to Bogdan two or three times this, this month. Uh, but it's just not dependable as, as an income stream uh, just to have an open door shop, at least for us, at least at Sawyer Yards. And so uh, what we've been doing is we've started hosting our own events, and that was part of our plan. And we invite just collectors, and we did that in December, and it was very, very successful. We only had 10 people. Come to find out there was a glitch in the software, and none of the invitations went out electronically. Uh, but we did have about 10 people, our collectors, and we made something like 2,500 bucks that night, which for us is, is, is huge, and I think we talked about that before. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to find other venues uh, to, you know, make some money. Uh, so, so far, so good, but uh, I just don't feel comfortable yet that, that things are, are solid. Uh, so we are also still involved in, in art exhibits. We've got the big art exhibit at Sawyer Yards at, at Silver Street called Without Limits, and I was on the curatorial committee for that. And uh, so that goes until February. Uh, we are both got into, uh, well, we both got invitations for the art, uh, Houston Area Art Alliance. And uh, that is a big honor to get asked. We were in it last year, and so we got invited back this year. So there's a juried show, and it, well, they're both jury, but one is invitation only, and one is a free entry, uh, a general entry. but. They're both juried, and so we'll be entering those as well. We're involved in one at the Silver Street Studios sponsored by Serrano Gallery, uh, um, Valentina Atkinson, 
and it's called the Ten Ants Show. The Ten Ants, get it? Ten Ants, the little bugs. So we're going to be doing that uh, in February as well. Uh, I'm also involved in a art show in Mexico City through PRPGMX with Michael Swank, and that show is called In Real Life, and that will be opening in February as well. Uh, that artwork has been shipped off to Mexico. It has been received. It's going off to the printer uh, to the framers, so that's exciting. And then Bogdan has a, another show in Mexico City, uh, and uh, through the uh, through the Polytechnic University there. So he's got a show in March in Mexico City, uh, and we'll have to go to that. Uh, he's also working on a. Um, invitational photo show uh, with a group out of Argentina. Uh, and then of course we are scheduled, hopefully, to go to Argentina again. Uh, well, again, we've never been. The pictures have all been. Uh, but to the uh, Tucumán uh, 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 photography, fine art photography show in Tucumán, Argentina this summer. Uh, and we did both get into the other art fair in Dallas and that'll be May. Uh, so both Bogdan and I will have a booth at the, the big art show. Uh, and we were hesitant because, you know, golly, we tried it last year, just Bogdan, and we finally gave up. I mean, they had to keep rescheduling because of COVID, and then we thought, well, even if they have it, who's going to come? So after the Biennale in... Uh, in uh, or was it the Art Basel in, in Florida, in Miami, <clears throat> that was quite well attended. So it looks like people are going to fairs again. And the, before the pandemic, fairs were the way most people sold art. So we're going to give that a try as well. So we're, we're staying really busy, uh, but we're kind of living out on the edge of that limb as well. Uh, I think it's going well. I'm just, I'm just so... so uh, used to, to being cautious. But we have our goals set, and we talked about that a little bit last time. Um, and so it's really important that you have those big overarching goals that kind of give direction and, and purpose to, to do the year intentionally, right? Uh, and so in, as important it is as it is to have those big overarching goals, it's also important to have really, really specific, measurable, and achievable objectives. Otherwise, how do you know if you reach your goals, if you can't measure your successes? So we've come up with some strategies under each of our goals uh, to, uh, to make those goals happen. And the goals, again, we have six. The first was to incorporate our goals into our daily business. Uh, what we tended to do was just make up our goals, and then we'd visit them again in December and go, oh, crap, we didn't do any of them. Uh, so we wanted to find ways, and we have some strategies now, to actually incorporate those goals into our daily lives, posting it in, in places where we'll see it, bringing it up at all of our meetings so that we actually have to kind of justify the things we're doing as per our goals. Uh, so that's... that's uh, some strategies we've come up for that goal. The second one is to sell more art. Uh, that's a really easy one. You just measure how much have we sold more, and we're creating these different scenarios to help sell these individual uh, uh, kind of collector events as well as art shows and exhibitions. Uh, we're creating venues in which we can sell more art. And then we just, to measure it, we just look at what we sold last year and what we sold this year, and we'll be able to see if we met that goal. Uh, we also want to, number three, is to increase engagement on social media. We're doing all this social media content, and we're just really not getting much traction. And it could be, could be that we suck, <laughs> we know that, uh, but it also could be that just because of the algorithms, because of things we're doing, this, we're just not getting seen. Uh, and so uh, I'm doing some research on how to, how to kind of better that and how to, how to increase our chances of, of expanding and being noticed on social media. And uh, we're certainly not going to cut back on any content. Uh, number four is 
to diversify our income streams. Right now, like I say, if we're just betting on the shop, and that's what we have been doing for the last two, three years, uh, and when that business drops off, where are you left with? So we're trying to find other ways that we can actually have some income stream that will see us through the, the, the hard times uh, in the art business. Um, number five is uh, to address that home work-life balance. Um, and that one we were very, very hesitant because, you know, your goals need to be broad, but your objectives need to be quite specific and measurable. And how in the world are we going to measure effectively whether or not we're achieving home work life balance. That's, we, we hesitated to even put it in there because we didn't want to put in a bad objective. So what we did was we said instead that we're going to address home work life balance. So our objectives are first to actually kind of come up with a strategy, come up with a rubric, a measurement that we can kind of attach. Maybe that's all we do this year. Uh, and the other was to, to actually chart out, keep a, keep a running log of what are we doing? What are we eating? Are we eating out all the time? Are we, are we having fun? Are we doing things that are enjoyable for us and resting? Are, are, you know, are, we, how, are we exercising? Are we, are we taking care of our health? So actually chart that out. And, and so that is something that is measurable at the end of the year. We could say, look, you know what? We're just not, we're not having enough fun. We're not spending enough time uh, eating healthily. Uh, so it, that one we realize is a, bit, is a bit weak, but we figured if we didn't put it in there, we wouldn't give it any attention this year. And if, if, if all we can do is give it some attention we're at least a little bit further along in figuring out how to measure it. So we left it in there. And then of course the last one is to expand some uh, public relations campaigns. We wanna, we wanna get noticed more, we wanna put out more PR uh, press releases and try and get articles and try and get our names out uh, in a positive way. Uh, so that's kind of what, what we're dealing with with our goals and objectives. And, you know, when you, when you think of all the time that I've been putting into doing all the business part of the business, uh, all the grunt work, all the tax stuff, all the paperwork, and then all of this work around goals and objectives, that is really just, you know, it's hard to justify when there's just two people in a business spending a lot of time on this kind of uh, stretch, strategic planning. But it is so, so very important. And, and I think it brings up, I read an article recently out of Pepperdine University, and it was interviewing artists about what they, how they viewed themselves as success. You know, what does success look like for a, a painter and for an actor and for an opera singer and for a set designer? Um, I'll put a quote, uh, I'll put a link to the, uh, to the article uh, in the description. But uh, as they interviewed these people, it, it became clear that, you know, for some of them, and you, you hear this when you're talking to artists all the time, for some, they, it's, it's kind of like, well, it's luck. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. And, you know, the actor who gets, happens to serve a meal to a producer, uh, his side job as a, as a waiter and gets discovered and becomes a Hollywood legend. Uh, and then there are the people who just get lucky and someone hears them singing and in the shower and then they audition and they've got a, a record deal or they go out to tour on an opera company. Uh, so there's that group who just feel like, eh, you know, it's just really lucky. You just have to keep hoping that something good will happen. Uh, and there's this kind of magical thinking around that. And then there are those who just who just slug it out and, and work hard and, and, and uh, uh, try and make contacts and just, just kind of sweat it out and don't have any real kind of uh, inspirational uh, or aspirational uh, component to it. It's just, it's just hard work. And then there's uh, what I think are the most, the people who just, who want to be just 
to be left alone. They just, they just want to do art. They, if, if only people would leave them alone, they would be able to go off and do beautiful art and, and everyone would, would be able to see it later. And you, you hear about people like that. There was this lady, I saw a, 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 a documentary, and I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but she was a photographer in the 50s and she just took pictures of daily life. And she took thousands of pictures of daily life. And she just, she just developed them and put them in her basement. She died and people found all of these pictures. And now she's quite a celebrity now that she's dead. Um, and her, you know, she didn't, her goal was not, she just wanted to do the art. And of course, then she missed out on, on all of the notoriety. And maybe that wasn't that important to her. But I think there's this romantic, nostalgic, kind of naive idea that we just want to work. And if people would just leave us alone, we'd be much better off and produce more, more beautiful things. I just don't find that to be true. I don't find that to be, uh, it just seems very, very naive to me. You know, I worked for 30 years as a librarian and I loved my library job. I really, really did. I, I feel, felt like it was part of me. And there was no day on my best day working in libraries, there was no day that I wouldn't rather have been at home watching a movie with my cat in my lap or off on vacation somewhere. Uh, I would rather have been doing something else. Those, the, my, my work, as, as fulfilling as it was, did not define me. And uh, my art defines me. Uh, so to, to be able to say, you know, to, to keep repeating over and over again, you know, but I'd really rather be, just be at home painting. Everybody knows that. You know, you're not, you're not being deep or, or, or particularly significant when you say things like that because that's true of everybody. I can't tell you how many people I know who are, are attorneys uh, um, or, or therapists and people who are quite successful and have these really big, serious jobs and they do art when they can because they need to escape. They would rather be doing something other than their legal profession or their medical profession. Uh, it's true of everybody. This, we're not special in that regard. So I, I find it kind of funny when, when I keep hearing artists kind of bemoaning the fact that they have to do marketing and, and they have to do things and, to make a living or maybe they have to have a, a, another job or maybe they have to do their own taxes. And I'm sorry, I just think that's pretty naive. Everybody feels that way. So get on with it. That, maybe I'm being a little too cruel, but it, I just find it a little too romantic for my tastes. Um, so when looking uh, at where we are in the business now, we've kind of got our goals set and our objectives set, we're ready to go, we're busy. Uh, and, but we're doing lots of good things. It's not like we're so busy, we're frozen. Uh, we're, we're trying to make some progress. And one of the things that we're doing is we're closing up this studio. Last time you saw this room, there were tarps everywhere. And this was, this is my, my mom's and dad's old house. They both passed. And so the house has now come to me. We set it up as a studio and it is a perfect studio. There's a giant window here that bathes this wall in light. It's got tall ceilings. It's got a, obviously it's a house, so we've got plenty of room. We've got a kitchen. We've, it's great, a perfect spot. And I don't think I'll ever find such a good uh, studio again. But we probably need to sell the house. I mean, the house costs us money. Uh, we are looking at uh, making some moves. So we're closing it up as a, uh, as a studio and we're gonna put the house on the market. So I'm a little sad. It's, it's a little sad to, to finally get a studio that you really feel like is, is gonna be the, the center of your art empire and then realize you have to start over and, and hope that you find such a good spot again. But that's part of it, right? Um, 
we have so many options that we're almost frozen. Uh, we know that this house is costing us about $500 a month to keep up and going. Uh, so we've actually now rented a, uh, a storage unit in Houston. We're gonna move whatever we need to move out of this house and probably out of our house, we just live across the street, and fill that place up as much as we can with things that we don't need uh, to get it out of our way. So that when it comes time, to, when this house sells, and then we'll start looking at trying to sell our house across the street, and then we need to know what to do. We'll either move to Houston, uh, we feel like we're building a practice, an art practice there with collectors, and we're building something in Houston. Uh, and so we hate to just uh, walk away and start again someplace else. But there's not a lot of, of, uh, of art opportunity in Houston. I mean, there's plenty, but there's, it's not like New York. It's not like, it's not like Santa Fe, uh, even Austin. So we could move. Uh, there's nothing else holding us here. We could stay in Houston. We could move elsewhere in the country. Uh, we could move abroad. Uh, Bogdan has family in Romania, obviously. Romania would be a really, really cheap place to live, but how do you sell art in Romania? Um, but then because of European status and because of our, our marriage, uh, I could get in, I could get visas in Europe. So we could work in Spain, we could work in Germany, Portugal, um, we could go to Malta, we could do anything we like, frankly. And having so many options, uh, you know, doesn't help. <laughs> Sometimes it, it's better to have fewer options so that you can actually make decisions. But we do feel like we're building something here in Houston. And uh, so there's a good chance we'll just stay here and, and keep slugging away. It's not a bad place to live. Uh, cost of living is, is, is not that high compared to other places in the country. Uh, but it's a lot higher than it is in other countries. So we've got, we've got plenty of time and, uh, well, we have plenty of options. I don't know if we have plenty of time. But that's what's going on with us. It's been a, a really kind of a whirlwind first month and it's not over yet. N this week we have our big collector event coming up. It's called Ice Ice Baby and we're having a winter theme. We're already planning now to have the next one in February with a Valentine's theme, uh, that's Amore, and we'll be doing the same thing then. So hopefully these kinds of collector events will help subsidize what we're not getting from uh, walk-in traffic, and then of course all of the other art sales and exhibitions we're gonna be participating in. So things are looking up. I gotta say, you know, this has been tough and it's been frightening, but we're making it, we're doing okay. Uh, I think we're doing better this year than we've done in the last two. You know, knock wood, COVID doesn't come back in a big way. So with that, I'm going to close out. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, stay creative. And uh, I will talk to you again next week.